Have you ever stopped to question the nature of the reality we live in? What if I told you that what we perceive might be nothing more than a simulation? Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of simulacra and simulation, a groundbreaking concept by the brilliant French philosopher, Joan Baudrillard. In this episode, we'll explore how the ever-increasing bombardment of images and media is constantly shaping our perception of the world around us. Get ready to have your mind blown as we unravel the secrets behind Baudrillard's thought-provoking ideas and how they challenge the way we understand reality. So, buckle up, and join me on this incredible journey into the realm of simulacra and simulation. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Let's take a step back and get to know the man behind the mind-bending ideas, Joan Baudrillard. Picture this a young French intellectual, deeply intrigued by the complexities of society, culture, and the human experience. Sounds like the start of an amazing story, right? Well, that's because it is. Joan Baudrillard, a French sociologist, philosopher, and cultural theorist, embarked on a remarkable intellectual journey that would ultimately lead him to develop his postmodern perspective. But what exactly is postmodernism, you might ask? Great question. In a nutshell, it's a movement that challenges the grand narratives and established truths of the modern era, pushing us to question everything we thought we knew. Now, imagine the boldness it took for Baudrillard to dive headfirst into the world of postmodern thought, armed with nothing but his curiosity and intellect. He fearlessly navigated the uncharted waters of existential questions, eventually giving birth to the groundbreaking ideas found in his work, Simulacra and Simulation. So, why does this matter to us? Well, Baudrillard's fearless exploration of postmodern thought invites us all to embark on our own intellectual adventures, to challenge our perceptions, and to dare to see the world from a completely different perspective. Who knows what fascinating ideas we might uncover along the way. Now that we've got a glimpse of Baudrillard's background, let's delve into the fascinating world of simulacra and simulation. Have you ever tried to recreate a painting or capture the essence of a beautiful landscape in a photograph? It's tough, right? Well, that's precisely where Baudrillard's inspiration for his book comes from. The idea that our attempts to represent reality can lead to a whole new, simulated reality altogether. Picture this. It's the late 20th century, and the world is buzzing with rapid technological advancements, mass media, and pop culture. Baudrillard our intrepid explorer of the mind, found himself in the midst of this whirlwind, and the context around him led to the birth of simulacra and simulation. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. The impact of this book on contemporary philosophy and culture cannot be overstated. Imagine the ripple effect of throwing a pebble into a pond. Baudrillard's work created waves that reached far and wide, influencing thinkers, artists, and even filmmakers. Suddenly, the world was abuzz with questions about the nature of reality, the power of images, and the implications of living in a world where everything we see might just be an illusion. So, why should we care about the emergence of simulacra and simulation? Well, isn't it fascinating to think about how one book can spark such profound conversations and shape the way we see the world? Just like Baudrillard, we can all be inspired by our surroundings and create something that leaves a lasting impact. Who knows, maybe one day, we'll be discussing your ideas and their influence on our ever-evolving world. Let's dive a bit deeper into the world of simulacra, shall we? Picture a pristine, snow-capped mountain, untouched by human hands. Now imagine a photograph of that same mountain. Can you see it? Good. But let me ask you this. Does the photograph capture the essence of the mountain, or is it merely a representation? Baudrillard would argue that it's the latter. You see, the concept of simulacra is rooted in the idea that there is a distinction between reality and its representations. In our ever-evolving world, we are constantly bombarded by images and symbols that are meant to evoke certain ideas or feelings. But do these images truly represent reality, or are they just an imitation, a pale shadow of the real thing? Now, let's take it a step further. Imagine taking a photo of the photo of the mountain. Then, take a photo of that photo, and so on. With each successive copy, 
the image becomes more distorted, losing its connection to the original reality. Baudrillard believed that this progressive degradation of reality occurs not just in images but in our entire culture. Think about it. How many times have you seen a movie that was adapted from a book, only to find that the movie pales in comparison to the original? Or consider how the Mona Lisa has been reproduced and parroted countless times, diluting its impact and meaning. Are we losing touch with the essence of reality, becoming lost in a sea of copies and imitations? Food for thought, isn't it? As we navigate this world of simulacra, let's remember to question the images and symbols we encounter and ask ourselves whether they truly represent reality, or if they're merely an illusion meant to evoke a particular response. After all, as Badria reminds us, appearances can be deceiving. Now, let's talk about simulation, the process of creating images and experiences that replace reality. Picture this, you're at a concert, and instead of enjoying the live performance, you're watching it through the screen of your smartphone as you record it. Odd, isn't it? You're experiencing a simulation of the event, rather than the event itself. But why do we do this? Are we so entranced by the allure of the screen that we've forgotten how to experience the world directly? Simulation doesn't just stop with our phones. Think about virtual reality, where we put on headsets to immerse ourselves in a digital world. Or even social media, where we carefully curate our online personas to portray an idealized version of ourselves. We're constantly creating and consuming simulations, but at what cost? The implications for human perception and interaction with the world are immense. Are we losing our ability to truly connect with one another, trading genuine interactions for a mere facsimile? Have we become so reliant on simulations that we can no longer tell the difference between what's real and what's not? You might say it's like living in a hall of mirrors where each reflection distorts the truth just a little bit more. We can't help but wonder, are we still capable of finding our way back to the original, authentic experience? Or are we destined to wander forever in a world of illusions, never quite able to grasp the reality that lies just beyond our reach? So, the next time you find yourself reaching for your phone to capture a moment or scrolling through the endless parade of images on social media, ask yourself, Am I experiencing reality, or am I merely a participant in a grand simulation? The answer might surprise you. Imagine, if you will, a world where reality and its representations are so intertwined that they become indistinguishable. Welcome to the realm of hyperreality, a place where the lines between the real and the simulated have become blurred beyond recognition. Does it sound like a scene from a dystopian novel? Well, believe it or not, you might already be living in it. Consider the news we consume. With the rise of fake news, deep fakes, and alternative facts, it's becoming increasingly challenging to discern the truth. Are we living in an era where objective truth has lost its meaning? If we can't trust our sources of information, how can we make sense of the world? Let's take a step further into the world of entertainment. Reality shows, for example, claim to offer us a glimpse into the lives of real people. But how real are these portrayals? Aren't they often manipulated, edited, and scripted to create drama and intrigue? It's almost as if we're watching a performance rather than an authentic experience. So, what happens when we can no longer tell the difference between the actual and the artificial? Does it even matter if we're living in a hyperreal world? where the distinctions have dissolved? Think of a world where we're all actors in a play, but the script has been lost. Are we just improvising, trying to find meaning in a sea of uncertainty? Or is there still a way to rediscover the essence of reality beneath the layers of fabrication? These questions may seem daunting, even unsettling, but they're essential to consider as we navigate the increasingly complex and interconnected web of our hyperreal world. After all, if we can't trust our own perceptions, what can we truly rely on? Picture yourself scrolling through social media, browsing through seemingly perfect lives, immaculate homes, and flawless faces. Don't you sometimes wonder if everyone else has it all figured out, while you're just trying to keep your plants alive? But here's the catch. Are these snapshots of perfection really the whole story? 
Social media has become a breeding ground for the creation of idealized personas. We carefully craft our online presence, selecting the best angles and lighting, applying filters, and writing captions to project a particular image. We then compare ourselves to these digital illusions, forgetting that we're only seeing a fraction of someone's life. But what if we apply Badriyar's insights to our social media engagement? What if we start recognizing the simulacra and simulations all around us in the digital world? Imagine scrolling through your feed, not as a passive consumer, but as an active participant, questioning the images you see and their relationship to reality. Would you still feel the same pressure to measure up to these curated facades? Perhaps it's time to develop a critical awareness of the online spaces we inhabit. By recognizing that the digital world is a playground of simulations, we can begin to foster authenticity in our interactions, both online and offline. So next time you're tempted to compare your behind-the-scenes to someone else's highlight reel, remember the wisdom of Badriyar. Embrace the quirks and imperfections that make you who you are, because that's where true authenticity lies. Let's shift gears for a moment and discuss the role of mass media in politics, where the creation of political personas and stories often leads to a blurring of fact and fiction. Just think about it. How many times have you watched a news report, only to wonder if you're being presented with an unbiased account of events or a carefully constructed narrative? It's no secret that the media plays a powerful role in shaping political narratives. The rise of the 24-hour news cycle and social media has only amplified this influence, turning political discourse into a veritable circus of carefully curated images and sound bites. But what if we applied Badriyar's perspective to analyze contemporary politics? Buckle up, because we're about to enter the realm of simulacra and simulations in political messaging. First, let's identify the simulacra in the political landscape. Are those larger-than-life politicians genuine leaders or merely a product of media manipulation? Are their carefully crafted speeches and public appearances genuine reflections of their beliefs, or just a performance designed to win votes? It's like a game of Where's Waldo for the politically minded. Next, let's apply Badriyar's concept of hyperreality to our analysis. In a world where fact and fiction are increasingly difficult to distinguish, how can we separate the genuine political messages from the noise? The key lies in encouraging critical thinking and discernment in the face of hyperreality. After all, the truth is out there. We just need to dig a little deeper to find it. Remember that scene from The Matrix, where Morpheus offers Neo the choice between the red pill and the blue pill? What if we, as citizens, have the same choice when it comes to engaging with political media? Do we take the blue pill and continue to accept the carefully curated narratives at face value, or do we take the red pill and challenge ourselves to see beyond the smoke and mirrors? So, my fellow critical thinkers, let's don our detective hats and approach political media with a healthy dose of skepticism. By doing so, we can pierce through the veil of simulacra and simulations, and demand authenticity from our political leaders. And who knows? Maybe our newfound discernment will inspire a more honest and transparent political landscape, where reality and representation converge in the pursuit of truth. Wouldn't that be a sight to see? In conclusion, let's remember the words of Badriyar himself, who once said, We live in a world where there is more and more information, and less and less meaning. It's up to us to challenge the narratives we encounter, to question the authenticity of what we're presented with and to strive for meaning in our interactions with the world around us. Thank you all for joining me on this fascinating journey through the realm of simulacra and simulation. Up until next time, take care, and see you soon.